All right, y'all. We coming into the garage. I have everything spread out. All the parts I'm gonna be using um, for the frame. The frame is already in place. I put it up on jack stands. Uh, gonna start putting it back together. Um, but yeah, pretty much saw painted uh, gloss black with that pour 15. I have all the parts spread out here that I'm gonna be using. Everything back from powder coat. Uh, I got my uh, drop springs, drop springs, drop shocks. Uh, I'm going with a two, uh, two front, two rear. Sorry, two front, three rear, drop springs. Uh, we got the tin works, um, transmission cross member that came out really nice. These are the brackets for it. Uh, transmission mount. I got the spindles from the '75 truck. Uh, frame I got uh, tin works um, LS motor mounts and it came with those energy uh, suspension uh, motor mounts uh, the U the U bolts for the that uh, rear end uh, what is it the rear end conversion kit um, I got the CPP um, what is that a uh, power steering update so i'm going to use the 75 76 power steering pump uh sorry uh gearbox and then this is the major part that you need right here to make that this brake kit work so on one side it's for your 75 70 74 sorry 73 to 78 uh outer tie rod in um, and then on the other side, it's your 65 truck uh, inner tie rod end. So this is pretty much is your, uh, we'll connect them both together. Uh, different thread sizes. Those are all my Moog uh, inner and outer tie rods, ball joints, idler arm. Um, we have the uh, bottom A arms, the top A arms. I got all my, took a trip out to uh, the car shop, truck shop in uh, Orange. I got all that. I got a bunch of other stuff needed to complete the frame. Uh, but yeah, the rear end's back in the back somewhere. Uh, so pretty much, oh yeah. And then these, I gotta get those resurfaced and I'm gonna go through the bearings. If the bearings are good, I'm just gonna put them on. These, I'm just gonna uh, sandblast them and uh, uh paint them some high temperature you know maybe black red maybe some of the pops but yeah here's the frame back on there oh yeah that's the the cutouts yeah i'm really happy with that poor 15 save myself like 800 900 bucks instead of getting it get, taking it to get sand uh powder coat it Saved me like a thousand bucks right there, man. Prices on all this shit is super fucking expensive. And all this I bought little by little in parts. You know, while I was building other cars, um, purchasing parts for another build. When I find the deal, I'll get it. If it's too expensive, I'll just pass it, you know. But that's the key is getting parts when they're they come up at a good deal discounted rate whatever and you buy a little here a little there and you just save it i got parts up there for my 62 ss just stored you know waiting waiting to get back from paint uh yeah pretty much that's it so we're gonna get cracking on this shit start building it it's gonna have 22 inch transports LS motor, speaking of the LS motor, here's the LS motor right here. Uh, the 5.3 4L60E. I got all the parts for that for the DOD Delete. I already ordered the, the cam from uh, BTR. Um, this is all my gaskets, head gaskets. You know, I got more stuff over here. So all that shit, you know, seals, um, what else? pretty much um, yeah pretty much I'm waiting on that BTR cam 
I'm getting the BTR uh, Stage 1 cam with some uh, uh, GM Performance 0.550 springs, some new push rods. Uh, once I get that, those parts, as I'm working on this, I'll be working on that motor, uh, taking off that DOD delete, and putting that shit back together. Hopefully, I'll figure something out how I'm going to do it, but putting this shit back together. This is like the best part about building cars is is building them back up. You know, once you see all that vision in your head, like what you want, and then you put it back together, that's, it's beautiful. So stay tuned, y'all. We're going to keep moving on this shit. But yeah, man. So I ran into a little problem um, with these bottom bar joints and... Um, the top bar joints these are the top bar joints these are the bottom bar joints i'll put the link in the description not the link but the part number that i use for this uh this brake setup uh utilizing your 73 to 79 um uh front front disc brakes from that truck to fit onto a 65 66 you know all the all those those years so pretty much um so the diameter of of this hole is quite uh about the same um so this is a new uh moog lower ball joint and that's 50.15 mm and then if you go here it doesn't fit so that one has to be lowered well i have to widen this up well you gotta take into consideration also the powder coat the powder coat's kind of thick so i have i'm gonna clean that up so it's just a little bit but this top bar joint this top bar joint um it's a lot bigger so that's the only difference in the ball joints it's the 75 73 ball joints are a lot bigger so what i had to do is i had a uh, grind that that hole uh, pretty much just uh, widen it up to get this ball joint to fit in there um, I got it done but um, yeah so we got to do the same thing to this one to the bottom ones not as much as this the top ones but got that one done um, we on our suspension today that one's done the both top ones are done um, I'm doing the grinding out here. So pretty much I have to drill this hole out. So you've got to get one of these to, it makes it a lot easier. We need to be at what I say 50 50 mm. So pretty much 50 mm. Kids out there in the pool. So 
so it needs a little bit more so i'm gonna repeat the process need a couple more inches to be able to fit in there the ball joint to press in there it has to be kind of precise because it, it's, it's a pressed in i'm thinking of just leaving it but let's see what we have now 49 i mean it does have like a wedge not a wedge but a beveled edge so maybe i just might leave it like that but yeah repeat that process the top ones are gonna have to be a lot more these bottom ones just a little a tad so that's in order to get this uh this brake setup working as you can see here i got the front arms uh bottom arms and i just wanted to go down a little uh, uh a little bump in the road that i caught uh when using this uh 75 uh front disc brakes on a 65 c10 okay so pretty much i'm gonna put all the parts on the description of what i use for this swap um and pretty much you're going to be utilizing your original 65 arms uh top and bottom arms the only thing is you're going to be installing the 75 uh ball joints 75 76 77 ball joints for your top and bottom um and another key thing that you're gonna need is this part from cpp all right so that's the part number and this uh lets you connect your 75 uh outer tie rod with your 70 sorry 65 truck um uh outer sorry inner tie rod in so this is able to connect both of them but I did one side already. I'm going to let you guys see how it looks. So remember, that's using all your 75 uh, spindles, disc brakes, all that. You know, I, I like to call it the, the poor man's uh, disc brake uh, setup, you know, just because everything you can utilize pretty much dirt cheap or, you know, even free ended up being for me, the case for me. But so that's it right there. I got uh, some CPP, uh, I think two inch drop springs in there. Uh, so I got the 65 um, top bottom arms with the 75 uh, spindles using the 75 uh, spin, uh, spindles and ball joints. Sorry. So this is going to be my 75 outer uh, tie rod. And then it goes into that CPP part number C5 something, but I'll put it up there. So this is big enough that it's threaded here for the 75 and then I utilize a 65 C10 center link and 65. Um, this is actually an outer tie run. That's the bump on the road that I found out. So you're gonna have to use not the inner, but this is the outer tie rod. So it was, I ended up finding out, you know, you're like, fuck, it's the inner tie rod, you know, which are these. So, I got these tie rod ends because they're the inner ones, but they will not work. They will not thread into here because it's reverse thread. So you're gonna have to get this one, which is your outer tie rod end, which makes no sense. But, you know, I had a, I was looking everywhere online. I couldn't find anything. So I ended up calling a CPP. Uh, I forgot the guy's name, but shit, he fucking, he blessed me with the knowledge. And now I'm about to bless y'all. So this is the one you need. This is the part number. That one is gonna go, that one with this one right here. So these two, pretty much this. That's what you're gonna need for your uh, front disc brake conversion, dude. So, fucking get your notepad out, get that shit right. Or, you know, drop a G, drop 800, whatever. And, um, yeah, man, drop a G, drop whatever you want, drop spindles, but this ended up coming out. For me, basically, I bought the whole rolling chassis from a 75 with the front and the rear end, whole rolling chassis. I ended up selling the frame for a 200, and I ended up selling the wheels for, I think, 250, so I ended up making money, and I got all my front disc brakes, a rear end that I installed on it for pretty much free, but... 
four men's disc brake swap. But that's how it is, man. Check it out. We got a little progress. I just wanted to make a quick video of what had happened. And uh, hopefully it helps somebody out along the line. But pretty much it's 415. Everything's powder coated, the arms. I ended up saving all my uh, shims and hardware. I just fucking ran it through the, the what is it, the, uh, the wheel, wire wheel brush, and what? Oh, these um, arm nuts. I just bought new uh, rubbers, grease grease boots, whatever you want to call them. But yeah, man, that's it. Got this drop spin, not drop spindle, just regular spindle. I'm having drop springs in the front, but hope you guys like it, man. Uh, gonna continue on this side, but hope y'all stay tuned. Hope you like the videos, you know, like, subscribe if you want. Don't matter to me, I'm still gonna make them, but thanks a lot, man.